you right to talk there, Winita? Are you doing the sponsors or will I? Ah, sorry. I was talking away and um, I didn't have my mic on. So there we go. Sorry about that. Um, I was just saying I'd like to welcome Sue White, uh, the Student Blogging Challenge. And I would also like to thank our sponsors as well, uh, Blackboard Collaborate, Australia E-Series, uh, Cyber Academy, Shambles, the Learning Revolution, and Coach Carol for Aussie Live. And I'd like to welcome um, Sue to the platform. Thank you, Sue. Thank you very much there, Janita. And thank you, uh, the other people who are here at the session. You'll find that I don't have too much to uh, have in the way of slides, but this is one that we always put up. If you'd like to uh, click on one of the smiley faces or the globe and uh, drag it across to where you are, we'll be able to keep a record. So it looks like we've got someone from Taiwan and perhaps Melbourne area in. Thank you very much. I've only got two slides. I wanted to make this session very interactive. And so this is um, just a screenshot of the, the basic heading of the Student Blogging Challenge. But there's also an active link on the bottom there. So while I'm talking and chatting, if you want to have the active link open, and be actually at the blog. We will be going to it at various stages through my little chat. But firstly, a, a little bit about um, the history. These are the things that we're going to be looking at, the history of the challenge, looking at the actual challenge blog, looking at some of the specific activities, and how to register for the challenge that starts in March this year. But a little bit about blogging, my blogging history. Somehow I met Sue Waters, who now works with EduBlog. Somehow back in 2008, January, I met her online. And I started reading uh, blogs that were recommended by her and decided this would be a great idea for me to have one of my own. So I created my own personal blog and then thought, well, why not do this with the students in my classroom? I had my own class. So that made it nice and easy. So I started then with a blog in early February. About March, I joined Twitter in 2008. Why did I start with a class blog? Well, I thought that would be a very safe way to introduce students to internet safety. You'd be doing it in a practical way. If comments came in that weren't appropriate, you could be showing that to the students and teaching them as you were using the blog. Um, it would allow students to leave comments on posts that I'd written. So again, it would be teaching them safety online, things like I'm um, using only their first name and that sort of thing. Students would then develop to writing posts on the class blog. So they might have a real interest in football, and so I'd offer and say to them, right, would you want to write a post on our class blog? And that way other students would start to leave comments to them as well. And eventually, by the end of May, so this is, you know, three months later, most of the students in my class had their own personal blog that they could use. Hi, Peggy. Thank you for coming, even though it's midnight where you are. <laughs> That's okay. So the students ended up having their own blogs. I was connecting through Twitter and I realised, well, why did I have the students blogging to start off with? And it was for them to make have a greater audience than just me. They were having an audience of their fellow kids in the classroom, but they weren't going any further. So I thought, well, how can I get my students to get comments from other places around the world? None of them had Twitter. None of them had any connections anywhere. They were basically just in their little own town. And so I spoke to Sue Waters, and she came up with the idea of, you know, putting out a tweet like Sue Waters does. And we did it. 
we put out a big tweet saying that uh, he was this teacher who uh, wants a little bit more contact with other students around the world. Is there anyone who wants to connect with us? Well, at that stage, Jan Smith from Canada with her blog Hazar, um, Ines Pinto in P from Portugal, and Paul Bogush from Connecticut in USA very quickly got in contact with me. And so we decided we'd have a competition in our classes to find who was the most improved blogger and who was the most global blogger with the way that they were writing their posts and commenting on each other's. So it was actually a competition, the very first challenge. And we started out with just those three classes. But very quickly, other classes heard about us and wanted to join in with us. So by the end of the challenge, that we had 26 classes, 250 students from 10 countries taking part, which was very, very good. Um, but then I decided, well, we need to go even further. And so we've been having the challenge now twice a year, once starting in February and once starting in March. So it's the first year, it's at the beginning of the year for those in the Northern Hemisphere and the beginning of the year for those in the Southern Hemisphere. Going on a little bit further down here. Now, by the last challenge that we had in September of last year, we had 218 classes from 20 countries of the world taking part in the challenge. We had over a 1,000 students from 15 countries taking part in the challenge. But we also had 36 teachers, students, educators sign up to be mentors. We found that after the very first challenge, it got too much for me to go and visit each student's blog three times in that 10-week period that we run the challenge. And so Sue Waters put out another tweet asking for people that could help out, who could go and visit a group of students and sort of be a mentor for them. And we got quite a few people, and so we've carried that on since 2010. The very last challenge that we put in each year is an audit. Usually after a 10-week period of study in a classroom, you have some sort of evaluation or checklist of what you've learnt and what you've done. So the students are asked to complete an audit of their blog and then to ask other teachers, parents and students to comment as well. So some of the things might be um, what what did the people think of your blog? Um, what were your first impressions when looking at this blog? What captured your attention, but also what distracted you on the blog? And what suggestions can you give me to improve the blog? So they were the types of questions students had to answer on their audit, the very last one that they had. We also found that students and teachers also like to have badges. And so the people at EduBlogs do quite a bit for the Student Blogging Challenge. It's run on the EduBlogs platform and they have created the actual website for me with the header and that like it is here. And they also create a badge for us and that's put up on the blog each year for students to make a copy and add it to their blog and so can the classes. So thank you very much to EduBlogs people for doing that. They also help, we presented about the Student Blogging Challenge at ISTI, the last two ISTIs that have been run and uh, Sue Waters, Ronnie Burt from EduBlogs come along and help run it. And I also have had people like Linda Yollis and Tracy Wananabe from America, they've come in and um, helped run the sessions at ISTI. 
We also have a hashtag so that whenever anyone writes a great post and they want others to read that post, they use the hashtag which is hash 14 STU for student BC for blogging challenge. So for this year it will be hash 14 stub C, next year it will be hash 15 stub C and so on. So we get a whole year's worth on there. Okay, anyone got any questions so far? Let me get a sip of water. Someone asking you a question about hashtags? Yes, I've just, I've just put the hashtag in there again, Peggy. Um, so that other students can connect easily and read each other's posts, those students who are on Twitter, there is a hashtag that we use and it's hash14 stub C. Okay. Blogging, still high on the agenda of skills for teachers. Well, I think personally, Carol, that blogging is a great way to introduce kids to safety on the internet. And having a class blog, there's so many different ways that you can use it. A lot of um, teachers will use it as connecting with parents. Um, other teachers will use it um, like in high school as here are all, is all the worksheets and that sort of thing. So the kids can get to it 24-7, no excuse if you're away from school for the day, the work's there on the blog and so on. Um, I personally sometimes use that comments for kids, Peggy, but I haven't um, pushed it very much as, at all, not through the blogging challenge. Okay, so what I want you to do, oh, how many teachers share a blog? I can only talk about those that are in Tassie, Carol, and very few teachers blog, have their own personal blog at all. Um, it would be great if a lot more did, but there's still too many people that just don't want to get connected. They still like being in their own little classroom and uh, not getting out into that big wide world. Most of us that are on here are already the sorts who would have their own personal blog. Yeah. I don't use quad blogging in the challenge, but I do mention it as something that they could be doing. Um, Some of the teachers I know who have used quad blogging have found that unless you've got four teachers who work well and connect well and are prepared to put up their post each week or whatever, often the quad blogging goes by the board. Okay, so let's actually do something with the student blogging challenge. What I would like you to do, I'm going to do a web tour and give you a few things to do looking at the blog. Um, we'll see how this uh, web tool goes, but otherwise if you want to get to the student blogging challenge on your own, it's quite easy to find studentchallenge.edublogs.org and you should be able to uh, follow along the pages as I put them there. For some funny reason this little bit up the top here goes very funny. They are usually headers across the top of the page. Can you give me a smiley face if you can see that page there at the moment? Okay, it looks okay for Peggy. All right, I, it would be a lot easier if you actually had it yourself open on the screen and just followed along as I mentioned things to look at. So the pages in the header are the important ones. Um, there's an info for first time visitors that just goes through and explains a little bit about 
um, subscribing by email and using a reader and how to get the post to come into you each week whenever I post. The challenge FAQs, um, often we'll have teachers say, oh, but I use Kidblog. Um, can I join the challenge or I use Posterous or Weebly? The student blogging challenge is for any sort of blog at all. Um, the only thing is that when I put instructions on there, I'm usually specifying them as edgy blogs type instructions. But I do have on the sidebar, if you look a little bit further down on the sidebar of the blog, which doesn't show up, see here, for some reason. On the sidebar of the blog, you'll find that there is an area called Get Help Here. And I've got links to Blogger, Kid Blog, and other places where they've got um, user guides so that the kids can click to those very easily. OK? Along in the top in the header again, the class blog help. Um, Sue Waters and a few other teachers put together a teacher challenge. And one of the teacher challenges was about blogging with your students. And so I have that as a link there so that teachers can go off and check out things that they could be doing, like making commenting guidelines. Um, they're about pages. Uh, how to use um, images in your blogs and that sort of thing, so that they've got the knowledge to help their students if they take part. Do you want this as an app share, Shingo? Would that be better? I'm um, sorry, I was actually doing something else, and um, when I looked away, I just kind of um, lost the spot. Oh, OK. So you're right now? Just do your own scrolling. OK. Um, so the class blog help takes you off to the teacher challenge. And that was actually created after the student blogging challenge when Sue Waters realised that the teachers needed a lot of extra help to get their students blogging well. So we put together a teacher challenge in there. Um, Some of the other things that you need to take notice of down in the sidebar is the subscribe by email for teachers if they want to have the post sent directly to them each week by email. And that way I say that teachers can copy the post directly and paste it in their own blog if they wish, or they just put a link in it in their blog. Um, I also have the tags and categories at the very bottom of the sidebar there. So if teachers are wanting to find out posts that are all about images, they just click on images and up come all the posts that I've tagged as images. Categories is just these are September 2013 or March 2013. So the categories aren't as useful, but the tags are. I've also got a section on there called Web Tools. We'll often mention that um, in the blog posts, try to do things other than just writing. And so I've got a list of some of the different web tools that uh, students and teachers might use. In the post, I try to write if there's an educational version of the tool. For example, if we do the one um, where teachers create an animoto of their school. And I mentioned, well, join the education version of Animoto because that way it won't cost you money. All you've got to do is have your email address to school and they'll give you a code that you can then use for the students to use. So that's an important thing I feel that I need to be doing with teachers is giving them that education version if it's available. Um, Peggy, all those that are down on that side, yes, we should be able to um, embed in the blogs. They're all ones that I've used before and embedded in the blogs. But again, that's something else you've got to teach the teachers quite often, how to embed something into their blog. Um, the other thing you'll notice down the sidebar are the Flipboard magazines. Last year, Sue Waters 
had a go at creating a Flipboard magazine for March, the blogging challenge for March. And she would go through and find some good posts written by the students and put it into the magazine. In the September one, we decided to do it slightly differently in that every post for the student blogging challenge has a Google document at the end where the students put in their first name and the URL for their post. That then made it a lot easier for us to go and see which students had actually written posts and choose some really good ones to put in the magazine for September 2013. We also created, because a couple of the weeks of the post are all about the environment and global issues, we also created a special one just for those um, particular posts. What I'm going to do now is let you have five minutes to have a look around and then we're going to have a look at some of the specific activities. So I'll take you off web tour now and put on a timer. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I've never done this before. Start timer. Oh, that says five minutes. Yep. Pretty simple. Okay. It should already be at five minutes for you. Yes, it is. That there we go. We've got five minutes, people, to have a look around the blog. Um, check out the pages at the top if you want, or check out some of the tags and so on. Any questions? Either um, come back and leave a question in the chat area or put up your hand. Um, the grade levels of the students, um, Peggy, I have students from six years old through to 40 or 50, some of them come in. Um, the majority, though, are 11, 12, 13 year olds that have their own personal blogs. Ian, casual relief teachers joining. When, when I do the mentors, relief teachers or pre-service teachers are excellent to come in as mentors and they look after a small group of students. Um, between 10 and 30, they can nominate how many students they want. A mentor then goes and visits at least three times in the 10-week period and visits the students that they're looking after. And as I said before, you don't have to be edgy blogs to take part. You can take part with any blog platform at all. Yes, the magazine's really good, um, Peggy. The only thing is that it's in reverse. Because we add to it each week, the very first posts are at the back of the magazine. So if you were going to put it together specifically as a magazine about the blogging challenge at the end, you might have to go through and do some rearranging and culling some of those that are in there. But I tend to just go through the list of all the students that have written posts and if it's a decent post the first week, I'll put it in. I think you can rearrange them if you're the owner of the magazine. I think you think you can move them around on the flipboard. That's what I need to get done in this next week before the challenge starts, get our March 2014 one set. Now, what happens, Carol, that um, you set up a flipboard sort of little toolbar at the top of your um, computer 
and when you find a really good post that you think should go in it, you click on the Flipboard toolbar and it puts it straight into your magazine that you've created. And the, the most, most recent ones are there at the front of the magazine. The other ones are at the very back of the magazine. Yes, yeah, so I hadn't seen Flipboard till Sue Waters showed it to me last year. But um, a great way of putting things together. Even if you've got, you know, a, um, a class of students who blog with their own blog, it would be a great way for the teachers to put together a magazine of, you know, these are our blogging posts. And that's what I do. I, I've got a group of students who um, were doing blogging with me last year, so I put together a a flipboard magazine of their posts and that way they could put the link on their blog and their class teacher could put the link on the blog and the other kids could go and read it and see what's there. Carol, I thought you would have known about this. I'm glad to see you've learnt something from it. That's excellent. Okay, looks like the time is going to be off now. So if everybody could go to the About page and click on the one that's called FAQ, the, that area. I'll do it back again on the web tour so I know what's happening. So we're looking at the Challenge FAQs page and You'll find that I've got down the very bottom some of the activities that the students are involved in. So they've been writing blog posts about these different various activities, commenting activities, non-written posts and things to do with blog presentation. And I've linked a few of these. If you click on any of those blue links, the global issues, using images, positive digital footprint, create avatar and about page, you'll find examples of the actual posts. So the global issues one will look like this. I hope this works easily here. No. Not going to open up easily for me. Click follow the first. Now it's not going to work on mine, Carol, because it opens up into some other funny thing. I usually have these set up that they'll open in a new window. That's the problem, I think. Okay, no worries. So if you've actually got it open yourself, rather than following me on my um, bit there. Let's see what it looks like. So can everybody see the page for the global issues in your own browser? If you can give me a little smiley face if you've got your browser open with that global issues page open. Yep. Okay, so we take part in what's called Blog Action Day in the September Blogging Challenge. And that's run every October. And it's a worldwide day for a certain topic for all bloggers to write about. Um, we also take part in Earth Hour every year so that um, kids can, um, well I, could, I can app share it, I'd, I'd much rather do app sharing than the web tour so I might actually take it off web tour and do app share.
Okay, so that okay for everyone with the app share there now? Okay, so we've got the, the different activities to have a look at and um, the idea is I put in each week five to ten activities for students and teachers to have a go at doing. They can do one activity, they can do all five. Some students when they join they decide that they want to write, do four or five of the activities each week. Sometimes they might only do one. So it includes things like here, um, activity three, have you or your class ever held a fundraiser for a global issue? Write about it in a post. What was the event? What did you do? How much did you raise? How did you feel? Other ones, it was all about human rights last year for the blog action day. So I found a few little links here and put them in so students can actually go and look at them and then you know, what did they find interesting? What did they learn that was new? What was a myth that was a bit busted? Um, then I have also activities for them to go and do. So some of these were different games and things. The teachers' resources, here was some more things to go and look at as teachers. And the very last thing I always have is if you've got more spare time, go and visit some other students in classes and leave comments on their blogs. And this was the little form that they just had to fill in their first name, which activity number they completed, their age, and the URL of their post. So it made it easy for me to go and um, find things. Okay, so that's the example of global issues. Any questions that people might have now? Okay, if we look at the next one, oh, don't even need to go there, do I? The next one was looking at using images. Yes, homeschooling is quite okay, Shingo. They'll just register as a normal student and then just put your name down as their teacher. Okay, so this particular one was all about adding images and attribution. So it's a little bit about teaching them about um, Creative Commons. So often this is teaching the teachers as well as the students. So I try and put in, you know, videos for the students to use and that sort of thing. Also extra information again for the teachers. Um, here are some extra places where you can go and get photos if you don't have the um, Comfight plug-in on your blog. And then here are some activities to do with images. And if a teacher gives me an idea, I'll put in here the name of the teacher who's done it and so on. Yes, Peggy, I always put the um, Linda Yolis's um, video about commenting when we do the commenting week. Okay. So that's that one about uh, adding images. Positive digital footprint, always do one about that. And again, I usually put in this view, the digital dossier video, which is a very good one for the students to see. It goes through from the fact that, you know, from the time that you're born or even before you're born, you've got a digital dossier starting with um, x-rays and all that sort of stuff happening um, before you're even born. And then for some of them time I'll separate into middle and high school students and then others that are suitable for all grades. So some of the activities might be more high school type things like looking at Facebook and those sorts of things which the younger student shouldn't be doing at their age. So I try and separate some of those things for them. Um, other things like Kathleen Morris here teaches all about digital footprints so she's got some really great resources there and I put that in there for her as well. This particular 
um, blogging activity was our tenth um, blogging challenge. So we had one where there was an activity that had to relate to the number ten. So I put in a little question there for them to do. Okay. Um, and the last two I think I've got here to look at is creating their avatar. I always write this post as either number one or two, and it's often one that students will already have done in class time. So it's all about different avatar websites. So I've got a list of different ones that are available. One's here that they just need to click on and it will take them straight to it. And then it goes through using print screen or the snipping tool to make a copy of it so that you can then upload it. So you can see how these instructions now were for using an Edublogs blog. But if you go over to the um, Get Help section and go to Blogger Blogspot help here. If you use a blogger one, it goes through there. I personally like this one, the Moa Roo avatar, but that's because that's what I'm known as all the time now. Anyone that sees that little picture of the grey haired lady with the flower, the cup of coffee and the songs on her feet, they know that's me. Okay, so that's our avatar one. And the very last one that I'm going to show you is the one here called their About page, which is usually done the same time or as the um, avatar. So I go through and try and give them examples of About pages to go and visit and see what they've done and then go about creating their own avatar. You'll see here the 2013 Blogging Challenge badge. The new one will be up soon, ready for 2014. Okay, so any questions about looking at some of those examples that we've had there? What I'll do is take us off that again. Um, I Peggy, with the badges, I ask Edublogs to do that, and Ronnie Burt usually does that for me. Um, I think he does it with, is it Dogo or Dojo? One of them that you can do it and create your own badges there. Um, Kai, the impact of having an avatar on learning, it's just a way of um, when you leave a comment on a blog, it's there and you get to be known by that face. Often students will keep changing their avatars, but that's okay. It's just that I've been blogging now for, what, five years and I've kept the same avatar the whole time. And so I'm now known with that avatar. So any other questions before I show you how to register and then we'll finish the session? No. Yes, I think it's Class Dojo that you can actually create your own. Peggy? Mm. Okay. We'll go to the very last one. So we'll do the app sharing thing again. And we'll go to just to the top of the screen. And you'll find up here that I've got the registration form here at the top of the screen. So teachers can go to this link here, register for March 2014, and it will open up and show them if you want to register as a mentor, then you read this post and you register there. If you're going to read as a, register as a class, you go to this link. If you're going to register as a student, you go to this link. So 
all the registration is connected here, but it's also written as separate posts. And so what I've done with the mentor registration, um, it's just a little bit of the basic history at the beginning. Um, who can be a mentor, what you're expected to do if you are a mentor, um, and then what you need to do. And so the idea is this is the first year I've used this form because otherwise if I want to leave, if I want to send out um, like a little newsletter thing to all the mentors reminding them of something, then I've had to cut and paste all the time from their comment. So this year I've actually created a um, form for them to fill in that will just give me their name and their email address. To find the mentors, Penny, I usually just put out a tweet and there's no age requirement to register as a student. Um, Kai, the badge is just a badge to say I've taken part. They don't have to do anything to actually earn the badge. All it is is a badge to put on the side of their blog to say I took part in the student blogging challenge. Okay. When mentors register, the idea is they leave a comment on this post and include a short bio about themselves. They include a link to their own blog um, so that I can check the validity of them as an educator and they also tell me what age group they would like to mentor. I've had some mentors now who've taken part in all of them since 2010. I've also got some students who mentor um, and that's one of these here, students who've taken part in at least two sets of the previous challenges. They can register as a mentor. <laughs> is, it, is this project work? Once I get started, Juanita, it's not too hard. I can usually sit down and write a post in about an hour, an hour and a half and that's one a week to do. The fun part is going and visiting the students' posts and leaving comments to them. I don't have a budget at all. Yes, it is a great job for a retired teacher, Peggy. The idea of the mentoring Kai is for when I began the challenge, I would go and visit every student blog three times over the 10 week period. Now that was easy to do when it was only 100 students. Didn't take long to do that. But now that I've got over 1,000 students taking part in the challenge, I can't go and visit them three times each. So um, that's what the mentors are for. They go and visit a group of 10 to 30 students um, three times over the 10 week period and leave comments on the posts. Okay. Now, the other ones you'll find are the class registration. So the same thing happens, they just fill in the form. And again, a way to contact the teacher is the email address. The email address doesn't get published, so nobody else sees that one. And the names of the students, the teacher's name doesn't get published on that one. Okay. Now, once the students have registered, how do they find out the other students to go and visit? Well, that's up here on these other two links, the class September 2013 and that will open up into a spreadsheet where from the form Google creates the spreadsheet for me and then I embed it here in this post, in this page. And so it's just got the name of the class blog, the URL, the country they're in, the, I've set the ages for the different student groups here and then the name of the teacher. So all the classes have to do is if they want to go and visit all the other four to seven year old classes, they just click on the link and it will take them to that classroom's blog. I usually try and get the teachers to make sure they go and visit, say, Mrs. Rabe. I'd expect her class to visit the blog on either side of them. 
and that way at least each class gets visitors from two other classes throughout the time. But often the teachers will make lots of different connections doing that. To get to that page, Peggy, it's the one at the top here, Classes September 2013. And so once teachers start registering their class for March 2014, I'll change this and it will be the ones for those that have registered for this one coming up. And the same for the students. They have a similar one once they register. They get a page here and then they're grouped according to their age. Students are asked to give two hobbies when they register so that they could then go back. So M, who's Tracy Wananabe's daughter, she can go through and look for other students of a similar age that also enjoy art or soccer and she can go and visit their blog. So they're starting to make connections with kids of similar interests. This is also where you'll see the mentor. Once I allocate a mentor, I'll colour it in the same colour as for the mentor. And so that's the group of students that Brenna goes and visits. Okay? This is the group of students that Michelle will go and visit and so on. So we, I'm always asking for lots of mentors. So if you've got any pre-service teachers, trainee teachers that would like to get involved in mentoring, it would be great for them to uh, take part and fill it in there. Yeah, Tracy has lots of people taking part in the blogging challenge. It's really good, um, Peggy. So I think I've gone through everything that I've got on my little list here of things to do and mention in the challenge. Let's see. We've done, looked at the history, we've looked at the blog, we've looked at activities and we've looked at how to register. Okay. So here we go. Thank you all very much for attending. I've run over a little bit but I know that they've given us a bit of leeway there to the next session. Thank you all very much for coming and I hope you and some of your classes or teachers might take part in the Student Blogging Challenge for March. Thank you very much. Back to you. Um, we'd like to say thank you very much Elsie Live for coming along and sharing that wonderful information. It's amazing uh, what you can do when you put your mind to it and you get some support with your other teachers. It's really impressive. Well done, ladies. Thank you very much for coming. I'll just turn the recording off.